It's now time for Mark Hankins, Faith for Every Nation. Mark and Trina train and equip leaders in every nation through church services, leadership conferences, mission trips, and media. Get ready for a direct and joyful message about how to grow in your faith and learn more about who you are in Christ. Now, let's join Mark and Trina. I'd open your Bible to 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 13. This morning we're going to talk about the spirit of faith. The spirit of faith. The most valuable thing that you can have as an individual is the spirit of faith. The most valuable thing you can give to your children or your grandchildren is the spirit of faith. So 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 13, the apostle Paul says, we having the same spirit of faith. We having the same spirit of faith. According as it is written, I believed and therefore have I spoken. He said, we also believe and therefore speak. The apostle Paul said, that's what we have. We have the same spirit of faith. So if you ask Paul, what is it that you have that keeps you from collapsing and quitting when there's great adversity and great challenges? What is it that you have? Paul wouldn't say, well, I'm just tougher than other people. He would say, what I have is a spirit of faith. So what do you have that makes you more productive and the most productive really of all Christians? Paul said, I have the spirit of faith. He didn't say I'm the best looking. He didn't say I'm actually smarter than most people. He didn't say I'm more talented. He just said, let me tell you what I have. I have the same spirit of faith. If you have it, you know you have it. And if you have it, then you're not bragging to say you got it. And if you got it, you can get anywhere else you need to go from that place. And that is the spirit of faith. The spirit of faith simply believes and speaks. In other words, Paul said, I believe and therefore I speak. The spirit of faith believes. I believe God. I believe the word of God. I have faith in the blood of Jesus. I have faith in the indwelling Holy Spirit. I believe and I speak. In other words, it's not enough just to be a believer. You must also speak or declare or say what you believe. Even the devil don't care what you believe if you'll be quiet about it. But when you have a spirit of faith, I believe and I say, or I believe and I speak. When the spirit of faith, it's like a pioneer spirit. A pioneer spirit is someone who is always pressing for new territory. The apostle Paul said in this attitude of faith, I forget those things which are behind, and I press for those things that are ahead. A spirit of faith is a pioneer spirit, simply meaning you got to know what to take. You got to know what to leave behind. You got to believe that your best days are still ahead of you. Your best miracles are still ahead of you. Your best blessings are still ahead of you. So the spirit of faith, a pioneer, number one, I'm pressing for new territory. Number two, I'm preparing the way for those who will follow me. I'm preparing the way for those who are watching and will follow in my footsteps. So Paul said, that's what I have, and that's what we have, the spirit of faith. He said it involves these two main ingredients. Number one, I believe, and number two, I speak. In other words, your belief system must be connected to your sound system. It's not enough to be a believer. You must also be a speaker. I believe and I speak, and that's what opens up the door to the supernatural. When you have a spirit of faith, you believe that your purpose, your purpose is an eternal purpose, that you believe that your eternal purpose is greater than the temporary. When you have a spirit of faith, you believe the unseen is greater 
than the seen. When you have a spirit of faith, you believe your words have authority and your words when you speak have an effect upon your life, your direction, and your destination. Paul said, that's what we have. That's what I have. That's what keeps me from quitting. That's what keeps me from collapsing. My purpose is greater than my pleasure. Come on, and my cause is greater than my comfort. When I have a spirit of faith, that means that I can't quit. I can't give up. That means my life is valuable. There's a plan for my life. There's a purpose for my life. And I believe and I speak. And that means the devil can't stop me and circumstances can't stop me. I believe God and I dare to declare my my God is greater. Come on, my faith in God is greater. And mountains may be there, but they're going to have to move. I dare to believe, and I also speak. That means there is a purpose and a plan for my life, and it's greater than the problem that I'm facing. It's greater than the pleasure I'm tempted with. I dare to believe God. I dare to speak and declare His plan and purpose for my life. While everybody else is running, ra rampant, and wasting their life, I have a purpose. God has a plan. I believe God. I'm not quitting. Come on, I'm not giving up. I have a spirit of faith. I believe God. The invisible is greater than the visible, and the eternal is greater than the temporary. Can you say amen? That's the spirit of faith. In Hebrews chapter 11, where the apostle Paul talks about the subject of faith, the most valuable thing that I could leave to my children and my grandchildren is the spirit of faith. When you have the spirit of faith, you can get anywhere you need to go from that place. My dad pastored for almost 50 years in a little town called West Columbia, Texas. Anybody here know where West Columbia, Texas is? I was born in Crockett, Texas, and I was raised most of my life in West Columbia, Texas, which is south of Houston. When my daddy moved there, there was only one traffic light in the whole town. One traffic light. Little town of 3,000 people. And the town was so small that the welcome and y'all come back sign was on the same pole. The town was so small. One Dairy Queen, one traffic light. And the town was so small, they put a mirror at the end of town to make it look bigger. The town was so small that they had a beauty contest and nobody won. In that little town, my dad pastored for almost 50 years. And when he went there, had a church maybe of 10 or 20 people. By the time he finished, he had a church of 2,000 people in a town where there was only 3,000 in the whole town. With that spirit of faith, he raised us with a spirit of faith, not without adversity. My dad got sick, and my dad had a heart attack, but he came up out of that and pastored for 50 years. That little town, 3,000 people, and my dad's church grew to over 2,000. In the middle of that, my mama had a nervous breakdown, but my dad did not quit. He did not give up. For two years, my mom struggled in the back bedroom. And I was just a little kid. And my dad would go to the back bedroom, and my mom lived in darkness and depression. And my dad would take the Word of God and go back there and get my mama to speak the Word of God. My mama's favorite scripture became 2 Timothy 1.7. God has not given me a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. My daddy would say, say it again. You know, my mama's name was Velma. <laughs> the only other person that has a mom named Velma is Jesse Duplantis. So that's why we're like brothers. Um, my mama's name Velma. My daddy said, now Velma, you're going to have to speak the word. And so he would say, say it again. God has not given me a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. In a weak little voice, my mama would say, God has not given me a spirit of fear, but power and love and a sound mind. My daddy says, say it again. Then my mom adopted Psalms 27. 
Oh, we always believed it. We always believed the Bible. But the spirit of faith requires believing and speaking. I believe and I speak. So my daddy would say to my mom, say that. And my mom would say, Psalm 27, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. The unhost should encamp against me. I will not fear. The war should rise against me. In this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, and that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion, in the secret of his tabernacle. He shall hide me, and now shall my head be lifted up above my enemies round about me. Therefore in his tabernacle will I offer sacrifices of praise and joy and thanksgiving. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Now, I'm not sure what runs in your family, but that's what runs in my family. Come on, I said, that's what runs in our family. With a spirit of faith, we dare to believe God. We have faith in God. But we don't just believe. What do we do? We speak. We say it. We declare it. If you're silent, you will lose by default. Anybody know the rest of the story? My mama came out of depression, came out of shame, came out of uh, uh, all the problems she had, and she came out praising God in the church and giving glory to God. If she was here this morning, you would have heard her voice before anybody else's. Praise God. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. She would be praised in God. Never criticize people that praise louder than you do. Because you don't know the pit that they may have come out of. You don't know the situation they may be in. That only God could bring them out. That's the spirit of faith. I believe God. I have faith in God. I will not be quiet. I lift up my voice. There is a purpose for my life. There is a plan for my life. And I will fight for that plan. And I will fight for that purpose. Hallelujah. I believe. And I speak, Dad Hagen, who's with the Lord and with my parents, and one of my best friends just died, uh, went to be with the Lord just a couple of days ago. And he and I, we would study the Word of God together because faith comes from hearing and hearing the Word of God. The strong, however strong your faith is, dependent on how much of the Word that you have in you. I believe, I believe would be my belief system. What is my belief system about life, about me, about God's plan and God's purpose, about what Jesus has done on the cross for me? What is, what is my belief system? Then next you must have your belief system connected to your sound system. In other words, your believer must be connected to your speaker. You have to be careful that your speaker don't get connected to your feelings and your circumstances, and other people's opinions. No, no, I believe and I speak. I believe God and I speak. And so in the middle of every challenge and in the middle of every adversity, I learned as a young man to believe God, to dare to believe and speak. And so uh, I learned a lot from Kenneth E. Hagin or from Dad Hagin. Dad Hagin said the Lord told him, go and teach my people faith. He did that. For 65 years, I listened to him many times. Every time I heard him teach the same sermon, then I learned every time to follow in the footsteps of his faith. No, he was not a perfect man. There's no, no perfect people around. I don't even see any here today. <laughs> Hebrews 11, which is the great faith chapter. Hebrews 11, it says 20 times by faith. By faith, Moses Moses had a spirit of faith. Moses, in Hebrews 11, Moses. And who was Moses' right-hand guy? Joshua. So Moses had a spirit of faith, and Joshua caught it from Moses. 
And when Joshua was in a battle, Joshua had the nerve to stand up and command the sun to stand still. The Bible says, God never hearkened to the voice of a man like he heard Joshua's voice, and the whole earth stopped rotating, and for one day almost, Joshua said, I need to finish a fight. I need to finish it. I don't want the sun to go down, so I command the sun to stand still. Where did he get that from? The boldness and the confidence that a man has the authority to command the earth to stand still. Where did he get that from? He got that from Moses. He heard Moses pray. He saw Moses stand before the Red Sea. He had the same spirit of faith. In other words, the principles of faith are taught, but the spirit of faith is caught. You catch it. In other words, you can learn the principles of faith, but faith must go beyond just simply being steps and principles. It must be a fire that burns in your heart. Let's try that again. I said it must be a fire that burns in your heart that you believe God has a plan and his hand is upon your life and his plan is greater than anything that's gone on in your whole life. Anything around you is the plan and purpose of God. You're not an accident. Come on, you're not just something floating around here to do what you want to do. You'll never be happy in your life until you follow the plan and purpose of God for your life. He created you for that. Jesus redeemed you for that. And when you have a spirit of faith, you say, I just cannot be stopped. I cannot be stopped. I believe God, and I dare to declare. I believe, and I speak. It's a fire. David said, the Lord will light my candle, then I can run through a troop, and I can jump over a wall. Now, until you get your candle lit, you're going to hit a lot of walls. I call that the first flat-faced church. And you can look at it and see all of them that are like, I'm disappointed. I'm upset. My life ain't going nowhere. Listen, but once your candle gets lit with the fire of the Word of God and the fire of the presence of God, you can run through the troop and you can get over that wall and you can chase those enemies down. No matter what has bound you, no matter what surrounds you, if you'll dare to believe God. Everybody say, I got it. I have it. I know it. And I'm talking about it. You say, what you got? Paul said, the same spirit of faith. I believe and I speak. I believe and I speak. In other words, the first part of you that your faith has to move is your mouth. If your faith is not strong enough to move your mouth, it will never move a mountain. Let's try that again. So here's the way Dad Hagen said it. He said, believing and speaking opens the door to the supernatural. In other words, if you're tired of natural results and you're believing for supernatural results, I dare to believe God. I dare to have faith in God. I have faith in the Word of God. I believe and I do what? I speak, and what does that do? That opens the door to the supernatural. In other words, you may be ordinary in your talents. You may be ordinary in your appearance. You may be ordinary. Come on now. You may not have been the valedictorian or anything else in that list. But if you have a spirit of faith, Woo, let me tell you, here's what my dad would do. One traffic light in town, and my dad would point out through the back of the church, and he'd say, there's one traffic light in town. And I'm going to tell you this, if you will dare to believe God, you can get anywhere in the world from that traffic light right there. If you'll believe God, listen, 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 only one traffic light. In other words, I might have been raised in the country. I might have been raised in a little town. But when I have a spirit of faith, I can get anywhere in the world from that one traffic light right there. Come on, God delights in using people like you. I like to say the the spirit of God has a reputation for, for using some real failures, some real losers, and making them champions. 
Come on, go ahead and get qualified right now. By faith, Moses. Come on now. By faith, Noah. By faith, Abraham. By faith, David. By faith, Sarah. Come on, by faith. And the list goes on and on. Hebrews chapter 11, 20 times it says, by faith. Why would God repeat two words in one chapter 20 times? Maybe he thinks we're slow learners. Why would God say, by faith, by faith, by faith, by faith? And the chapter is full of failures. I said, it's full of failures. Just read all of them. They're all in Hebrews 11. So I said, well, why would God choose to use that one phrase 20 times and then mention all the failures? By faith, what does that mean? That means no matter how you fail, no matter what you've been through, if you will dare to have faith in God, God will make your life significant. You can find out his plan. You can follow his purpose, and your life will have tremendous influence. Come on, in this world, if you will dare to live by faith. Woo, go ahead and say hallelujah. I said if you'll dare to live by faith. Come on, in this family, we declare we live by faith. We walk by faith. We fight the good fight of faith. I believe and I speak. Hallelujah. All right, go to Mark 11, 22, 23. While you're looking over there, we have the same spirit of faith. It's like a fire. One thing about being on fire is it's hard to be still when you're on fire. Come on, the Bible says our God is a consuming fire. You don't chill when you're around God because he's a fire. You get close to God and there's a fire that burns in you. And the world and people around you may try to put that fire out, but that's what we call the spirit of faith. I believe, I speak. Or you could say it this way. Any time God wants to change someone's life, he always touches their mouth. We have located the problem. It is right underneath your nose. Any time God wants to change someone's life, he always touches their mouth. Jeremiah. God told Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 1, God told Jeremiah, do not say I am a child. Do not say I'm just an ordinary person. Do not say, come on, that I'm too young for this or I don't have the ability for this. He said, Jeremiah, I knew you before you were born. Let me just talk to you a minute. God said, I knew you before you were born. I framed you, I fashioned you before you were ever born. My hand has been upon your life from the time that you were born. I put certain ingredients in you and certain things that you needed to carry and supply in this generation before you were born. Are y'all still here? That means God has a plan. He has a purpose for your life. I knew you before you were born. God, he's got you on his radar right now. He has a plan for your life. Woo! He said, I knew you were before you were born. This is Jeremiah chapter 1. And he said, do not say that I'm just a child or I'm just an ordinary person. God said, I'm going to put my words in your mouth. All right, let's try that again. God said, I'm going to put my words in your mouth. He said, I'm going to touch your mouth. I'm going to put my word in your mouth. The same thing with Isaiah. God told Isaiah, he said, Isaiah, you're ordinary and it looks like you're a failure, but I'm going to touch your mouth. And he took a coal of fire and put it on his mouth And he said, who can I send? And Isaiah said, I'm here right now, and I'm ready to go, baby. Send me. God's getting ready to launch you in the next 12 months into his plan and purpose for your life greater than you can ever imagine. Come on. He's going to touch your mouth today.
Change the way you talk at the house. Change the way you talk about yourself. So he told Jeremiah, I'm going to put my words in your mouth. You're watching Mark Hankins Ministries, Faith for Every Nation. In Mark chapter 9, verse 23, Jesus says, If thou can believe, all things are possible to him that believes. On the other hand, to not believe is an insult to God's integrity. The good news is, since unbelief is curable, there is nothing that is incurable. The cure for unbelief is the teaching of the Word of God. The moment you act on the Word, God makes Himself responsible for the results. In this 4-CD set, Faith is Motion Activated, Mark Hankins has four messages that will strengthen your faith. Faith is Motion Activated, Faith Speaks, Faith Has an Attitude, and Ultimate Faith Champions. These messages can also be downloaded on the Mark Hankins Ministry app for free. When you hold fast to your confession of faith, you are connected to Jesus' victory. There is a miracle in your mouth. For your offering of any amount, you will receive Mark's book, The Spirit of Faith. Believing and speaking opens the door to the supernatural. The Spirit of Faith takes the victim out of your voice and puts victory in your voice. Your gift of any amount will help Mark and Trina Hankins train believers around the world. Our vision is for believers to catch the spirit of faith, learn who they are in Christ, and be strengthened by the move of the Holy Spirit. When you sow into someone's need, your needs are met. When you sow into someone's dreams, your dreams will come to pass. For your gift of any amount, you will receive the four CD set, Faith is Motion Activated, and the book, The Spirit of Faith. Please call 318-767-2001 or visit markhankins.org. Well, I hope you enjoyed the message today, a message of faith. Man, they teach faith unlike any other. They can really get it across to you where it's simple, but it's so deep, but you understand it and it just changes the way you understand faith and the way you walk your own faith out. Now, this week, they've been teaching out of the spirit of faith. And this is our offer that we have this week. If you don't have this book, I encourage you to get it. It is a game changer when you need a spike in your faith. If you're feeling a little bit weary, maybe you've been believing God for a long time and you're starting to feel a little bit tired. Pick up the spirit of faith. It will just light your fire, strengthen you, and encourage you to just keep going after what you are believing God for. So if you want to get that book, all the information you need is on the screen. You can go to the website or you can call the number on the screen. I hope you enjoyed today. We'll see you next time. Mark and Trina invite you to experience three days of heaven on earth at Camp Meeting 2022. Save the date, June 28th to the 30th in Alexandria, Louisiana. We have a power-packed lineup of speakers. This is a life-changing week for the whole family. Please join us June 28th through the 30th. For more information, visit markhankins.org. Thank you for watching Mark Hankins Ministries, Faith for Every Nation. For more information on how to build your faith, visit markhankins.org. You can access many free word resources to help you find who you are in Christ. Stay connected with us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or our YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.